Hello YouTube and welcome back to What The Math. Today I'm taking a look, another look at Kerbal Space Program. I'm back in the game and I, my apologies for not posting another video for quite a while. Real life had caught up to me and I had to do a few more things in real life before continuing my uh, adventures in different games where I can use math to do various things. Now today we're doing something cool. I actually, I was inspired by a challenge from Kerbal Space Program on Facebook. Uh, they do have a channel where they actually post certain challenges and one of the challenges was build a lightest possible SSTO. So let's do it. Now I think the lightest possible SSTO is a rocket. It's not a space pla plane, it's a rocket. Uh, and so we're gonna be looking at rocket uh, modules and units and actually let's think about this logically. So what is the lightest possible uh, command module I can have? And the lightest possible command module is of course this one right here and it's called Probobododobodine QBE. Can't pronounce it, but we know it's the lightest because it's it's about 30 kilograms. There's another one here that's actually a squished version of it and has a funny story behind it, but it is a little bit heavier. It's, uh, it's about 10 kil kilograms heavier. So let's actually start with this. So it's a little box that's essentially it's a computer that controls our spaceship. It doesn't do anything else. It doesn't have any um, controls or anything like that. So we need to actually add stabilizers and or possibly a way to control the spaceship. Now, stabilizers will, uh, are usually too heavy. If you look at the um, stabilizers in the, in the control module, I think the lightest one is actually at least 100 kilograms. So that's out of the question. We can't use that. Actually, this one is only 50, but still, that's still too heavy. We're not gonna be able to build it light as possible with STO if we use this. So let's not add stabilizers, we're gonna have to control the ship manually. I'm gonna add the lightest fuel tank. That's actually, is this the lightest? No, that's not the lightest. This one is the lightest, round 8 toroidal fuel tank. Now I do need to add a lot more than just one for it to count, so let's try toroidal tanks first. Let's just say I'm gonna have three, let's see if this is enough to do anything. And for engines, there's two choices. Uh, well, there's really three choices, but it's actually two of those choices are the same. These two engines are kind of similar. So there's either radial, uh, radial fuel engines, LV1R, with a very, very low thrust of, I don't even remember, I think it's like four, yeah. Thrust of four, and each of them weighs 30 kilograms, and they provide a decent ISP, but nothing to sing songs about. So I'm not going to sing songs about these engines, but I would need to add at least three of them, which makes it at least 100 kilograms. Or I can use the Rockamax 487S. It weighs three times more, so it's basically equal to three of these engines, slightly more than that. But it has a better ISP, it, both in vacuum and in the atmosphere. So I'm actually going to use this. This is my favorite engine to use for many things, including this. And the bonus additional bonus is it has a vectoring range of one degree what does it mean it means that you can actually turn with this engine you don't have to add any stabilizers you can use this to turn your ship now I'm, i am going to use one mod for this and that's uh kerbal engineer because i want to know what my delta v is and unfortunately my delta v is 3.3 kilometers what does this mean? Well, it means I can only change my velocity by 3.3 kilometers. To escape into the Kerbal orbit, I need to have at least 4.5. So that's not enough. That's not enough. I need to actually add more fuel tanks. And even with seven toroidal tanks, actually two of them are inside each other, so you can't really see them. Uh, my mass is already at one ton and my delta V is still not enough. So actually, let's not use toroidal tanks. I think they're a bit of a waste. And I'm going to be smart about this. I'm going to use one little fuel tank that's called uh, FLT100. Let's see what we get with this. And look at that, it's already 4.4 kilometers per second. And the mass is 693 kilograms. That's actually, that's actually relatively good. The only thing I'm missing from this design is I need to give my um, command unit some power. So I'm going to attach a few, where are they? A few um, uh, solar panels. And I think I'm going to use this particular design because this will cover, this will give me sunlight from any direction. Yeah, this is good. Good enough. All right, so this looks like it's, it can probably fly, right? Can it make it to space, I wonder? Well, let's see if it can. It has a 4.4 TWR, meaning that it's pretty powerful. It actually can go really, really fast in the atmosphere. Uh, you need at least 1.01 to escape into the orbit. And I have four times that. My mass is just under 700 kilograms. 
and my thrust is 30 kilonewtons. Let's find out if this actually flies. And I'm going to keep my flight engineer right here so I can see my delta V. Uh, actually, maybe I'll close it for now. I'll, I'll use it later. All right, so let's uh, let's do some takeoff edge here. And specifically, the important part here is as soon as we reach uh, 10 kilometers, we need to turn here. We need to turn to 90 degrees right way, right side. Why do we do this? Well, if you do, if you go left, you're actually going against um, against the atmospheric uh, stream and you will actually lose some delta v if you go right if you go in the right ways you're going with the rotation of the planet which already adds and um, adds a few meters per second to your delta v so you're actually saving something like 150 meters per second so always try to turn right or east or whatever you want to call it basically this way um so this will save you some delta v now there is actually a perfect um way of ascending and also a perfect way of um, using fuel just so that you can save um, as much fuel as possible due to atmospheric drag, but I'm not actually following this. I believe the perfect speed uh, above or sort of below 10 kilometers is something like 100, 100 meters per second, but I'm already going too fast. I, need, I should have gone slower, which means that I've already lost some fuel here, which is okay. It's not, not a big deal. Let's see how far I can get in this tiny, tiny spaceship. If you can, if you can even make it to uh, um, an orbital orbital velocity that will be perfect okay so in a, very very soon i'm going to start turning right and at this point we'll start reaching our orbital velocity and this is where my uh my engine is perfect for this type of a mission because it actually lets me turn my spaceship spaceship some smaller engines they don't have the ability to turn they don't have some uh, what we call a gimbal um or essentially you can actually turn your spaceship uh, this one can, and it's actually awesome. Look at how tiny it is. Look at how small it is and how awesome and powerful it is. Okay, so um, I'm going to go ahead and try to reach as high, as high altitude as possible and then see if we can reach the orbit. So I've just stopped my engines because I'm actually trying to reach the altitude about 65 kilometers before I continue blasting my engines sideways. And here you can see my, I need about 1200 meters per second delta V and I, and I have just over that or maybe approximately that. So I don't know if I'll be able to reach perfect orbit, but it will be orbit and orbity enough. Uh, so let's slowly rotate our ship. I'm actually blasting my engine at like 1% right now, just so I can turn my ship toward my orbital alignment. And at around 70 kilometers, I'm going to start blasting my engine. Okay, so we're in space now. Let's blast our engine and try to reach an orbital trajectory. Basically, I'm blasting all my fuel toward this one direction. And I can actually increase my speed completely. Ooh, look at how fast I'm going. Oh my god, this is awesome. And here comes nothing. So let's see if we actually reach an orbit. I don't even know. Um, I know we're, we're flying above the Kerbin, but I, we don't know if this is orbit. And the answer is yes, look at that. We've reached an orbit. I got lucky there. Look at that. Even though it's not a perfectly circular orbit, but yes, we are in orbit. So this spaceship can totally take you to space, this tiny, tiny beast. Now, the design I was actually looking at on Facebook is a little bit different. Let me show you what it's like. It's I think it's actually more efficient than mine and does have more Delta V as well. Now, so I'm going to erase this spaceship. Actually, I'm, I'm going to keep the top part. I'm going to keep this part, but I'm going to remove this engine and show you what this other person did and um, give him some credit for this as well. And specifically, I'm talking about a person named Foxster, I believe. I believe that was his name or her name. And uh, he or she used this. Two um, monopropellant fuel tanks. And then, look at this beauty. He or she used three monopropellant engines engines uh so these actually weigh just as much as one rocomax a little bit lighter than that but they are ridiculously powerful this one is 30 um thrust has 30 thrust but these one of these has 20 so essentially you have 60 thrust right now <laughs> twr of eight this is a ridiculously powerful this little beast is a ridiculously powerful spaceship um and misaligned no my OCD is acting up. I need to realign these. All right. Um, so yeah, this is this is crazy. This is a crazy beast. Let's look at the, some of the stats here. So 770 kilograms, just a little bit heavier. And you can actually remove some of the mono propellant because you do. Right now you have delta V of 5,000. This is like this is more than you need. You can actually 
keep it at like this and still reach the orbit. Increasing your TWR and essentially decreasing your mass by a lot. So this is actually lighter than my previous spaceship. This is at 650 kilograms. But I'm gonna I'm gonna just keep it until you know, just for the to its limit. Take a spaceship to its limit, see how fast it can go. Uh, but this is yeah. So it's um, optimal design would be just under 700 kilograms. Ridiculously powerful and really good delta v. So let's see how how it flies. Oh, I forgot to add one thing. This person did have one thing because this does not have a turning ability. So you need to add one of the thruster thingamajigs on top just so you can turn your spaceship. Because otherwise you'll be just flying straight up. So I'm gonna put this right here. So right here on top and this will let me turn my spaceship in space. All right, let's fly. And there it is. This is a tiny spaceship that will blast us into the outer regions of Kerbin. Now, uh, I'm going to just for fun blast my engines full speed ahead and see how fast we go. I do need to enable my um, RCS for this because otherwise I won't be able to turn. And here we go. And look at how fast it's going. Oh my god, I need to slow down. This is ridiculous. This, this is way too powerful. Um, yeah, okay. So I'm going to keep my speed at around 100 meters per second and basically go into space with this. But actually, just for fun, let's see if we can actually... Let's just fly straight ahead, straight up ahead, full speed ahead, and see how powerful and fast this spaceship is. Look at that. Look at how fast it's going. This is ridiculous. No atmosphere can stop me. I'm going to get... To, oh my god, I'm already burning up. I could go into space with this at any minute, at any point in time. Okay, so no more fuel left, but I'm going at literally a speed of orbit. Unfortunately, I'm going straight up. Um, and yeah, I'm flying in space really, really fast. And this will, oh my god, this will take me to 500 kilometers above Kerbin. So anyway, let's actually not play around and do reach orbit with this. I'm going to revert to my previous uh, spaceship. Revert to my previous launch, and here we go. So this time I'm going to bless them at like maybe 10%. I think this is actually enough for it. Okay, maybe a little bit more. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. This is good. Okay, here we go. So this is a very, very good way of um, trying to take off your rocket. Going just around 100 meters per second until you reach about 10 kilometers. And after this, you can slowly start increasing your speed. Because otherwise, the atmospheric drag will basically waste a lot of fuel. Uh, so I'm already, I'm already at like 10% thrust and going relatively fast. So this is a ridiculously powerful spaceship. Um, and I could have even removed one of the solar panels because I don't think I need even three. Uh, I need to enable my RCS so I can start turning. And we're getting close to that turning point. And here we go. We're almost there. And this is why we have this engine on top because now I can actually turn my spaceship that needed oh boy uh, 45 degrees it just it's very 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 sensitive so you need to be very careful turning it i can actually turn a little bit more and there we go so this is essentially what we're going to be doing using this engine to turn and at around um 70 kilometers we're going to be going directly sideways to try to reach the orbit and with the moon in the background, here we are. We're waiting for that altitude so we can actually start blasting our engines. We need about 1200 meters per second. We have just that. And so hopefully this will also take us into orbit. I think I actually did waste some fuel in uh, blasting my speed a little bit too much, but that's okay. Anyway, so this is actually a really, really good design. And I think ultimately you can even design something similar using these tiny, tiny engines, which were actually added not so long ago. They were in uh, one of the previous alphas, maybe a few months ago that these engines were introduced. But using these engines, you can actually possibly even create an SSTO and take yourself all the way to the moon. Okay, okay, here we go, here we go. And blast them full ahead. Look at that speed, look at that acceleration, holy crap. That was a lot. All right, so let's see if we're in orbit. And we're, oh no, almost made it, almost made it. But anyway, I think I didn't make a mistake in trying to um, blast my engines a little bit too fast, but you can totally take this into orbit because it actually originally had more Delta V than my first spaceship. It just, I kind of played around a little bit with it and essentially caused my spaceship to um, lose some of its precious fuel while taking off from the atmosphere because I was going a little bit too fast. If you keep your velocity just under the, um, the needed 
velocity to take off perfectly so that atmospheric drag doesn't stop you, you can totally take this into orbit. And I'll show you in a second, I'll actually just do this again and show you that this, it, it's actually possible. And here we go, attempt number two. This time I actually did follow a very, very specific atmospheric takeoff guide where you need to keep your speed under a certain amount for every uh, every type of a height or altitude basically. So um, there's a very specific guide. I'm actually going to post a video about it in, in one of the future videos where I'll explain what you need to follow if you want to actually have a perfect takeoff and save as much fuel as you can. But look at how much fuel I have this time. Um, I do have quite a lot left. I think it's actually extra 700 meters per second. And this is going to take me into orbit in a second. There we go, that's an orbit. That's an orbit right here, almost an orbit. 168, that's close enough. And there we go, I actually tried to correct my orbit and it's now at 73 kilometers and 148, 142 kilometers. Essentially, it's a perfect orbit. Not exactly a circular orbit, but it's an orbit nevertheless. So uh, I am in space and my, I still have about 729 meters per second left. So this is a pretty awesome design, way better than the design I actually showed in the beginning. Uh, and all the props for this go to, all the kudos go to uh, Foxster, whoever this person is. Very, very well done. And hopefully next time I'll be able to create something similar and take it all the way to the moon and then back. Anyway, thank you for watching, please subscribe and game you later, bye bye.